perspective and spin are two of the strongest forces you're going to use. And you've all heard the example, I think I told you, a priest goes up to a bishop and says, Your Eminence, do you mind if I smoke while I pray? He goes, of course I mind. Praying is a sacrament. I refuse to allow you to defile it. I forbid it. And two weeks later, a new priest gets off the bus from the seminary and goes up to the same bishop and says, Your Eminence, do you mind if I pray while I smoke? Oh, go right ahead. What's in it for the bishop? He wants you to pray. So on one hand, smoking is, you know, defiles it. I forbid it. The other is, well, you're going to smoke anyway. You might as well pray. Sure, love it. So how do you craft your messages in a similar fashion? What's in it for me? You have to remember that. I don't care what you're selling. I don't care how you're communicating. I don't care what, what philanthropy you're doing. It comes down to what's in it for me. If you can answer the question, what's in it for me, to the target you're hitting, target meaning your customer, your lead, your, your traffic, you will engage. You will communicate. People talk about, you know, and, and we're going to get into a lot more digital marketing, but you know, engagement, content, SEO, it, you know, I read, I don't know, 90 plus newsletters a month and blogs and, and uh, every night I'm going through them because just on digital marketing alone, there's a gazillion of them. And after a while you get a fog, but and you see patterns and you can tell right away who knows what they're talking about and who doesn't. And, and as you start, and I do that by questioning. And sometimes I'll respond and I'll ask a question. Well, what's the harm? It's there to respond and they, they're going to answer your question. So I have a question, I ask it and see what their answer is. And I might ask that same question of five different experts on SEO. And I look at their answers. And it's not just my bias of, oh, I believe this guy, I don't believe those. I look at the results, I look at what other people are doing, I do some research on it because I'm interested because it's important to what I do. How many of you are putting in that time and effort? The problem is in so many, so many cases you get so busy doing your day to day, you overlook the things that got you there. And you can't. You've got to hire a better assistant or, or hire more people. You, got, you have to free yourself up to explore to question, to daydream, to go back to, to roots and, and start again in, in your mind. Um, someone said the difference between asking a question and pursuing a question is the difference between stasis and growth. If you ask a question and you get an answer, okay, now you move on. But if you say no, it is a deeper answer, there's more here, and you keep questioning and you make it an obsession, and you become, I, people say, what do you want to be? I, I aspire to someday be, to be proudly OCD, to cross every possible T, every possible dot, every possible I, and ask every possible question. I'll never get there, but I will never stop trying. And as you do it, and my mind works in a, a different way, um, they let me out on weekends, which is really good, so I can do these things. Um, you get faster at it. You get faster and faster and faster at it. So you can ask these questions really quickly. And you can go through hundreds of questions in no time, in the blink of an eye. And the more you practice it, the faster you're going to get. One of the best exercises you can do for your own company is look around at what exists now that didn't exist 10 years ago. And what you'll find because of technology is that almost everything you're looking at is a recombination of existing things. Now, I used to be a writer many years ago uh, in a galaxy far, far away. I used to write TV and film. And you learn there are basically seven plots. There are seven plot lines that you know, have existed throughout time. And every story written is a variation of those seven. There is not a film out there that you cannot trace back to one of the seven basic plots in literature, in life. Why am I looking at, at combinations and recombinations and uh, variations? Because what you're probably not doing in your own business is recombinations or combining different things. So case in point, uh, Brian, I know you're doing home theater, but you then discovered lighting. So now, because he, um, he's doing lighting, he's now mixing lighting with the theater and blending those two together, and the technology of computer controls and remote and Bluetooth and integration with home automation systems. It's a constant recombination and, and combining different things that technology affords him, and Brian's on the cutting edge of all that. I know that because he's done it for me. So how many of you are innovating, and how many of you are looking at what you're doing? 
Um, I'm going to make up something, and I, I know nothing of what I'm talking about. But on critter control, maybe there's sound waves and ultrasonics that will destroy them or, you know, or, or get them out. Maybe there's silent things that only dogs can hear, or I'm making this up. But how deep into technology do you go and other things? A biologist took a, uh, a group of, of oil uh, engineers, petroleum engineers, to the Galapagos Islands to give them a different perspective. And they were, the mo they were so bored that uh, they would rather watch milk you know, curdle or paint dry. And she pulls out a, a shell of a sea creature and says, nothing will stick to this shell. Nothing on Earth will stick to it. The chemicals secreted by this animal prevent anything from sticking. And the oil engineers then said, oh, you know what? We have to shut down the refineries every six months and bore out all the pipes. Because it's like building up arteries, your arteries. And they have to do that every six months. And they lose tens of millions of dollars of production and time. And they spend so much on doing it. So well, all of a sudden, they, they got interested. They took this. They figured out what the chemicals were. These are all chemical engineers. And what they were, they, they designed the coating. They coated the pipes. And they've never had to shut down the, 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 the refineries. So they weren't so bored anymore. You don't know where the answers are going to come. So how many times do you not read that article because you're too busy, not look into other things because you're overwhelmed with what you're doing and you don't have time to barely get home and spend time with your kids? Then that tells me you're not growing, you're not learning, you're not exploring. And that's part of your job. Just like the new CEO in your company would do or you would do as a new CEO, this is your job. Another exercise is and it's a very hard one to do, is think incorrectly, think wrong. If you know that something is the right way to do it, don't do it. Think about how to do it the wrong way. Why? Why would you do something deliberately that's wrong? Well, I'm not saying put it into practice. That could be very expensive. But if you go down that path and you say, this is wrong, you start saying, why is it wrong? Who did it this way, or not specific names, but you know, collectively, who did it this way to determine which way was right? And what results did they get? And what did they miss? I've done so many things where I've thought the wrong way to go. And I go, I can't work. And I, oh, I see what the disaster is. And I go, whoa, wait a minute. And along the path to doing something wrong, I thought, everybody missed this sitting on the sidelines. And there's this little thing that even in all the, the wrong side of it, this one little thing was right. But everything else was so overwhelmingly wrong, nobody was going to pay attention to that. So all of a sudden, it clicked, and I went, oh, I love that. That's a little, little thing. And I pulled that out of it and put it into the right way. And it upped the numbers. Discovery. You, when I said before that I don't want to be the smartest guy in the room, and I'm not, you guys have this ability. You can do all of this.